your spirit come, send your spirit come. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. I want us to stand to honor the Holy Spirit. We stand in awe of you. Someone is desperate for him even yet today. Someone is desperate for the Holy Spirit yet today. Someone is desperate for the Holy Spirit yet today. Yes. Marcos Kilabo Shanta. Not by power, not by might, but by his spirit. By his spirit. Marcos Kilabo Shanta. You've come for an encounter. You have come for an encounter. Not by power, yes. By the mountain will move, God. the valley Send will be exalted. Yakos Kilabos are impossibility become possible. Ashes turn to, to beauty. Like a sister, there's oil of joy. Makos Sita Rabashita. I don't know that thing you are believing God for. You've tried in your own strengths. You've done everything in your own strengths. But today the word of God is telling you, it's not by power, it's not by minds, but by your spirit. I want you to tell the Lord, Lord, today I have come for an encounter. Let your spirit, oh Lord, touch that situation in my life. Let your spirit, oh Lord, brood over that situation in my life. When the Holy Spirit was in move, dry bones in, in the valley became living, living bones. And what happened? They became a formidable army. I do not know the thing you have brought here today. But today I want you. You are desperate for his touch. You are desperate for his bread. You are desperate. That's why you want to pray. Father, I have come for an encounter. Come and meet me at the point of my need. Father, Lord, I attest for you. This is the air I breathe. This is the air I breathe. Your only presence make a difference in my life this, this is, is the air I breathe just worshiping my cost killer bullshit this is the air I breathe just just focus on everything Your presence. This is my daily bread. Your presence. Your very word spoken to me. Someone is desperate here. Tell him, I des I'm desperate for you, Lord. I need a touch from you, my cause get up. And I am lost without you. And I, and I, and I am desperate. Oh, and I, and I, 
strongholds have been taken away. Hold on, strongholds, hold on, strongholds. Casata kula bata casata. Yes, Lord. Not by power, but by your spirit. Leke seke to robo bobo bo shinta. Holy Spirit, the hearts will come in this place. Holy Spirit, the heart will come in this place. I want you to cry to him now. Is it about a child? Is it about your health? Is it about your career? Is it about a relationship? Whatever it is filling the gap is yet to meet your needs. Is yet to carry you through. Is yet to make a difference in your life. On the day of Pentecost, their lives never remain the same again. I want you to tell you, Holy Spirit, I present to you. I test for you concerning all of my children, concerning whatever it is, my marriage, my career, the ministry. You make a difference. 
Come and do that to Shalom Kingdom. We honor you. We honor you. We honor you. Take your place. We honor you. Thank you. The Epa, the Advocate, my Deliverer, my Restorer. Thank you. Thank you. Take all the glory. Take all the glory. Use me as an oracle. I will only declare your cancer. Thank you, Father. For in Jesus' name we have worship. Thank you so much. How many of you felt his presence in this place? Yes. Our lives will not remain the same again. Mm. Mm. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, choir. So humbly, praise the Lord. So, for the few times left today, we are going to discuss um, the baptism of the Holy Spirit. The baptism. Of the Holy Spirit. Many of, many of us have been hearing about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Today, my prayer is as many. Maybe I just first ask the question How many of you have not yet uh, received the baptism of the Holy Spirit with evidence? Of speaking with tongues. You can put up your hand because we are here to help you. If you are no, not uh, speaking in tongues, there's an evidence. Although you can receive it sometimes. Thank you so much. We have one there. Are we all speaking in the language of the Holy Spirit? That would be great. If I have everyone speaking in the language of the Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Okay. So... Today we want to discuss the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Why do we need to be baptized? So I'm happy many of you have received the Holy Spirit with evidence in speaking with tongues. And uh, my prayer is that the blessings that come, the empowerment that comes with the baptism of the Holy Spirit will be manifesting in our lives in the name of Jesus. Because there's nothing as bad as you having something and you are not experiencing the fullness of God's joy. We are supposed to walk in overflow. We are supposed to walk in abundance. We are supposed to be, you know, um, Christ's episode. Wherever people see us, they see Christ in us, the hope of glory. So it's not something of shame. When I ask that question, I'm quite sure many of you are still there. You've not started speaking in tongues. It's not something of shame. It's something we all desire and we want to walk in that overflow. The more you, 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 you exercise your faith, because it's a faith walk, the more you exercise your faith in speaking in tongues, the more you are empowered, the more you will walk in the overflow. My prayer is that today at the end of this service, as many that seems to think they do not have it or they have it, they don't know what to do. The God of heaven will empower you and you will start exercising your faith and speaking in tongues and enjoying the benefits of, uh, of the overflow. Praise the Lord. So, first I want us to know that apart from baptism of the Holy Spirit, apart from baptism in water, we all know of baptism in water, uh, we also have what you call the baptism into the body of Christ. 
baptism into the body of Christ. So we have some other baptism, but at least for believers, when you gave your life to Christ, you were baptized into the body of Christ. Praise the Lord. Because you were an alien, you were a foreigner, you were not in, in this family. So baptism from the Greek word baptizo simply means to be immersed. So that's why we in the redeemed don't believe in sprinkling water on a child's head as baptism. No, baptism means the, the, the individual, the candidate must be immersed fully in water. I try to understand. And you are brought out. It's a, it's a show of being dead with Christ and resurrected with Christ. So you are baptized first into the body of Christ, into this family when you give your life to Christ. I try to understand. So you are baptized into the family, into the body of Christ. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So, so we have that. Then we also have, you are baptized, so you can have that in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 17. We have so many scriptures here. And also 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 13. You are also baptized by water. So when you give your life to Christ, you move from that stage of being baptized into the body of Christ, where you have what you call the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit comes to dwell in you. That's why... Sometimes when you try to drift to the wrong direction, the Holy Spirit in you keeps telling you, don't go there, don't do that, you know, advising you, speaking to you, bothering you, convicting you of sin. I you understand? That's why you cannot freely be committing sin the way you used to do because you have the indwelling spirit. Now, remember I said you are baptized into the body of Christ when you give your life to Christ into the family. Secondly, you are uh, you are baptized by water, and that's what uh, water baptism. Jesus showed us the example, and he said it that whoever believes should be baptized. I don't understand. So, for as many that do not yet, uh, uh, that have not yet gone through the exercise of water baptism, I beg of you, we are going to start announcing very soon. During the summer period, we usually do water baptism. So you can always connect with the church office, tell, tell us you want to be baptized by, you know, by water immersion. So the third uh, baptism for a believer is what you call the baptism of the Holy Spirit. So the first baptism, you know, by water is you, the candidate, me, the pastor, and uh, assisted by Pastor Benga or any other minister, because if someone is not with you, the candidate will drag you together with them into the water. It has happened several times. So you always need two people to hold them, because out of fear, they will drag the minister together. All of us will be baptized again <laughs> in the water. I'm quite sure you've seen some video where the person drags the minister inside the water too. So most cases, we have uh, two of us trying to, you know, assure you that there's no fear and uh, we, we, we immerse you in uh, water. So the baptism of the Holy Spirit is an experience that anybody when you have it you will know. You will know. When I gave my life to Christ I came from a traditional church where they don't believe in all this baptism, Holy Spirit and everything. So when I gave my life to Christ and I go to, you know, church or wherever I go and people are, you know, speaking in tongues. I wanted that experience. And I read in the Bible that these signs shall follow them that believe. In Matthew chapter 28 from verse 18 there, they will speak with tongues and also Mark chapter 16. So I wanted this experience. And I, I, anywhere I go, because... The scripture shows us that it is what God wants us to do. Maybe we read it so that we start from there. Acts chapter 1. Acts chapter 1. From verse 4 to 5. Then 8. Acts chapter 1. From verse 4 to 5. And verse 8. And also we are going to read 
Matthew chapter 3, verse 11. So, and being assembled together with them, that's Jesus, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which is said, ye have heard of me. Remember in Luke chapter 24, verse 49, he said you should tarry till you are endued with power. So now he's telling them that they should still wait for that promise till they are endued with power. For John truly baptized you with water. Jesus is going to be baptized by John in River Jordan. So for John truly baptized you with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days from hence. Now can you jump to 8 there? But you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you and you shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in Judea in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. So we can see that the endowment with power to do the supernatural, to live a victorious life, to be able to witness freely without fear, Everything comes with the baptism of the Holy Spirit. When you first had your first encounter with Christ, you had what you call, you were regenerated. You have what you call the indwelling spirit. But when you have the baptism of the Holy Spirit, that is when you walk in an overflow. You are immersed in the, in, in the water, I will call it, of the Holy Spirit. Jesus is the baptizer, not man. That's why in Matthew, you can go to Matthew, uh, uh, Matthew chapter 3, verse 11. John telling them, he said, you have come to be baptized. He said, but someone is coming that is greater than I. Matthew chapter 3, verse 11. He said, indeed, I, I, I indeed, I mean, baptize you with water unto repentance. Now, before you, uh, you are baptized by water, uh, by water, you must first repent. You don't dip a sinner into water and come back a greater sinner. Uh, you must repent. There must be repentance. You know, you confess your sin, you repent. Then you go through what you call the water baptism. I try to understand. So, I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance. But he that cometh after me is greater than I. Whose shoe am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with what the Holy Ghost and with fire. The mention of fire there simply means when the Holy Spirit baptizes you, it brings about purifying you. You can't continue sinning when you have a journey, a canter with the baptism of the Holy Spirit. The fire there comes to purify. In Malachi chapter 3, he said, look, I will purify the house of Levi so that they are able to offer, you know, sacrifices that are acceptable unto me. So that is why in Acts chapter 2, we are now going to Acts chapter 2, from verse 2 there, when they were gathered in one accord, remember, the Holy Ghost came first like a mighty rushing wind with a cloven tongues of fire and rested upon each and every one of them. I can't receive the Holy Ghost on behalf of Pastor Benga or my, my children or my husband. No. It has to be an individual experience. So when I say, Lord, I need an encounter, you are telling God you need an encounter because it is an individual experience. So when the Holy Spirit came on the day of Pentecost, as Jesus told them to wait, what happened? It, it came upon each and every one of them with cloven tongues of fire. That is why, remember, tongue is to speak. That's why the next thing that happened, and there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire, and it sat upon what each of them, and they were all filled with what the Holy Ghost and began to speak with what tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. So if you have an experience of the baptism of the Holy Spirit, it's something you will know. Even if you are not speaking in tongues, something changes in your life. Your language will change. That means the way you used to talk before, the Holy Spirit will be coming it. 
at your anger, your everything concerning you, there must be a difference in your life. And it's a process. It's a process. So Peter that day, after this, they thought they were drunk because they started speaking in unknown tongues. Meaning if the Holy Spirit takes care of you, possesses you, you have the baptism of the Holy Spirit, there must be changes in your life. People will see it. Even if you say, I can't speak with tongues here, something will happen that people will say, this person has had an encounter with God. Praise the Lord. So, they were endued with power and they started speaking in tongues and people there saw them. So we can see that one of the evidences that shows you have received the baptism of the Holy Spirit is the evidence of speaking in tongues. Like in my own case, I wanted the experience, you know, and I was really, really desperate for it. I go, maybe then, because it's a faith work, as I said, it's a faith work. And um, somehow I was not receiving it, but I decided because for you to receive it, you must desire it. You must test for it. Psalm 42 says, as the, the deer panted for the water brook, so my soul tests for you. I desired it, and this time I decided to. Remember, Lord, God has given you the Holy Spirit. You just want, when we are talking about the baptism, is you know, an overflow with evidence in your life. So, it's another level. So, I, in my house, I was praying one day. I said, Lord, this experience people are having, I want to have it. And in my bedroom, I got it. But some people might not get it that way. Some people, they need to maybe lay hands upon them for them to receive, which happened in the book of Acts chapter 8. If you remember, that Simon that was an, an occultic man, when he saw that the hands were laid upon the people that were, uh, had given their life to Christ and they started speaking in tongues, he wanted to offer money so that uh, he, he, he would start uh, doing, doing, it, doing it also. So, baptism of the Holy Spirit is something that must be desired by every believer. It's a necessary tool for you to live a victorious life. Are you getting it? Because it's going to help you, empower you to start manifesting in various dimensions. Both the gift of the Holy Spirit, the fruit of the Holy Spirit, it gives you the spirit of boldness. I don't understand. It gives you the spirit of boldness. When the early disciples that time, they, they, they were threatened. They were threatened. What happened? They just prayed and the Holy Spirit <laughs> fell upon them again in Acts chapter 4. What happened? They started, you know, speaking the word of God with boldness. Now, after the baptism of the Holy Spirit, I'm using this more like a Sunday school. You have what you call the infilling of the Holy Spirit. You only get baptized once, but you can undergo what you call the infilling of the Holy Spirit several times. The more I have a deeper relationship with God, remember we are talking about the infilling. Infilling means I'm submitting myself totally to God to be using. If I have this bottle filled with something, then I cannot put anything inside. The more I empty this bottle, the more something can go in. That is the infilling. The more I am dead to myself, to flesh, to say, this is the way I want to do, this is the way I want to do, the more the Holy Spirit is taking total control of me. That's the infilling. The more he's using me. It's all about obedience, all about yielding to him. And it, it controls. It, so, you see, the first time the Holy Spirit came, it came as what you call Resident, he came to reside in you, in dwelling. But at the baptism of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit came as a president also and a resident. President means he controls you. Anything about your life, he takes charge of it, he controls you. Are you getting it? Don't go there. 
do this, do this. That means you yield completely to him. And it's the precedent of your life. When you get to that stage, you know you are working with the Holy Spirit. When you get to that stage where flesh doesn't bother you much, you know you are getting into the overflow. And do you know it's a daily walk? Oh, because Satan will not agree. In most cases, Satan will want to fight you. He said, no, I'm there to serve. Spirit of the living God, fill me anew. Do you know Peter? Peter, on the day of Pentecost, Peter received the Holy Spirit. But do you know, in Acts chapter 4 again, the Holy Spirit filled Peter. But not baptized this time, but filled Peter. So we have what you call the baptism of the Holy Spirit, and we have what you call the filling of the Holy Spirit. It is my prayer that the, the benefits that come with baptism of the Holy Spirit, you will receive it in the name of Jesus. Oh yes, you will receive it in the name of Jesus. You will be empowered to do signs and wonders. You will be empowered to live a victorious life. You will be empowered to, uh, to succeed where others are failed in the name of Jesus. So when you receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit with evidence in speaking in tongues, you discover that you start operating the gift of the Spirit. You start operating. What pastors are doing, you can do it. Honestly. What people are doing, you can do it. Because you have the overflow. The Holy Spirit is not partial. All he wants is believe in God, trust in God. It's a faith walk. You can lay hands on the sick because say, these are the signs that we follow those who believe. The problem is that we are unbelieving believers. Unbelieving believers. What others can do, you can do it. It's a faith walk. God said it and so it is. I try to understand. And that was what happened in the early church that um, continuously they were walking in this overflow, the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Do you know, when I look at the case study of Peter, in John chapter 20, I want to uh, uh, show you something, the necessity of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. In John chapter 20, verse 22, Jesus breathed upon them. He said, and when he has said this, he breathed upon them and said unto them, receive ye the Holy Spirit. This was when these disciples got born again. Day of Pentecost was baptism. This was when they got born again. He breathed upon them. The indwelling spirit. But now go to John chapter, then he said, uh, What whosoever sins ye remit, they are remitted unto thee. And whosoever sins ye retain, they are retained. I try to understand. Now go to John chapter 21. Jesus has breathed upon them, but he has not given them the power. They only have the indwelling spirit. John chapter 21. Simon Peter, remember in the previous chapter, Jesus just breathed upon him. Simon said, remember a chapter before then, Jesus has breathed upon him. Simon Peter said unto them, I go fishing. Peter, you were called to be fishers of men. You've been following Jesus for three years. He has breathed upon you, the indwelling spirit. And you are still going fishing. You see the difference between the baptism of the Holy Spirit and just the indwelling spirit. And they said, because it was a bad influence, remember it's a leader. If the leader fails, everybody is failing. And they said unto him, we also go with thee. All of them forgot their ministerial job. <laughs> follow, follow. They went forth and entered into a ship immediately. And that night they caught nothing. Do you know when the Holy Spirit, you've not gotten the baptism of the Holy Spirit, you'll be doing things in flesh. And the problem of it is that you'll be getting frustrated. You'll be failing always. You, you will go for the wrong program. You will marry the wrong person. You will go on the wrong uh, uh, trip. You will always be having problems because 
you, the baptism of the Holy Spirit is not yet in you. Are, you are not, because remember, I told you, the baptism is God taking full control. It's your president. Taking full control of you. So if it's not president yet, it's just president. You are sitting, you lift and yeah, do this, you scattering your body like a child a throwing tantrum. <laughs> But when the money was, so he fished all night again and caught nothing. But when the money was not come, Jesus stood in the shore. But the disciples knew that, knew not that it was Jesus. Go to five, please. Then Jesus said unto them, children, have ye any meat? They answered him, no. And he said unto them, cast the net on the right side of the ship and ye shall find. And they cast therefore, and now they were not able to draw it for the multitude of fish. Therefore, the disciples whom Jesus loved said unto Peter, It is the Lord. Now when Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he gave his fisher's coat into him, for he was naked. Do you know that when, <laughs> when you are only with the Holy Spirit, you are not obeying him, you will be going naked. That means things of shame will be following you. <laughs> so we can see the effortless labor of Peter when he did not have the Holy Spirit. See, Jesus came to assist him. But this same Peter on the day of Pentecost, when he had the Holy Spirit baptism, what happened? Just a simple sermon. thousand souls. Can you see the difference between the baptism of the Holy Spirit and when you are walking just with the indwelling with the Holy Spirit. With that in mind, I want us to pray because remember I said the baptism is necessary for you to live a victorious life. Without the baptism of the Holy Spirit, life would be struggle. Life would be struggle. Look at what they were looking for. Jesus was already back between what they wanted. In, in, in the shore. At the time the flesh is taking you all the place and frustrating yourself, if only you yield to him, it will barbecue what you are wanting. It will make life easy for you. Then you're struggling. The things people are looking for, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, Matthew 6, 33, and every other thing people are rushing after with what? be rushing after you. But you might be here. You do not have a relationship with Jesus. Remember I said the baptism of the Holy Spirit is Jesus himself, not man, not pastor, immersing you in his pool of, of, of Holy Spirit. I'm feeding you with his word. I'm taking your life to another level. But if you do not have a relationship with him, because he said, if we ask the Father in Luke chapter 11, it's from verse 11 to 13 there, he said, when we ask the Father, he will give us the Holy Spirit. He said, which Father? These children will ask for something and they will give them the wrong things as a stone. He said, no. How to do good things unto your children. How much more shall your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask? You have to ask God, Lord, I need a baptism. If you have not been baptized, you need a baptism of the Holy Spirit. But if you've been baptized, you need what? An overflow. That's why in Ephesians chapter 5 verse 18, it said, be, uh, be filled with the Holy Spirit. It's a continuous tense there. Be filled with the Holy, continuous present tense. Be filled with the Holy Spirit. I want us to finalize it there. Why will you be filled with the Holy Spirit? So that you start speaking with tongues. The drunkard will be always be speaking any act because he's possessed by the alcoholic spirit. But when you are possessed by the Holy Spirit, what happens? You will be speaking the, the language of the Holy Spirit. And being not drunk with wine, wearing in essence, but be filled with what? The Holy Spirit. Now, when you are filled with the Holy Spirit, the baptism of the Holy Spirit, what happens? Let's look at it. Speaking to yourself in psalms and hymns. Spiritual song, singing and making melody in your heart. Sadness runs away. 
Disappointments runs away because there is a joy in you. There is an overflowing joy. It is with joy you draw from the well of salvation. Giving thanks. The person that is filled, there is a difference. When you see someone always grumbling or complaining, it shows they don't have the baptism of the Holy Spirit. It doesn't matter whether they are blasting with demonic tongues or whatever tongues. One of the evidence that you have been filled with the Holy Spirit that giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of Jesus, then submitting yourself one to another. If you have problem thanking God, check your, your word level. Check your spiritual antenna, that's it. Check it. So one of the evidence is that joy bubbles in you. Because the Holy Spirit continuously is giving you the oil of joy. But if you are here, you do not have a relationship with him. You might just want to tell him, remember. Or maybe you, you just have the indwelling. You do not have the overflow. Overflow makes a difference. Makes a difference. But something sometimes has to stir it up. Maybe you're afraid. Even Timothy... The spirit of fear was binding Timothy. And uh, St. Paul had to tell Timothy in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7. He said, God has not given you the spirit you receive. It's not the spirit of fear. He said, but the power of love and what a sound mind. I want us to stand up. Who wants God? Who wants an infilling? Who wants an overflow? Who wants you know to run over? You want a running over in your life. I want you to start telling the Lord that Lord today I come, oh Lord, that you fill me anew. Maybe you are the baptism of the Holy Spirit, but maybe there's a leakage. Maybe sometimes you are overwhelmed with things and you are not working in the overflow. That's why I want to pray, Father, come and fill me anew. Come and fill me anew. I need you, oh Lord. Fill me also. Uh, 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 fill me to overflow. I need, oh Lord, a feeling from you. You need to be empowered for those things you are believing God for. You need to be empowered for the journey of life because the journey is far. You want to pray that Lord come and empower me. Someone is praying there. He said when you call upon him, he will answer. When you ask for the Holy Spirit, he will give it to you. I want you to pray Father, let there be an all overflow. Let there be an infilling, a fresh fire upon my life. A fresh fire upon my altar. A fresh fire upon my life, oh Lord, in the name of Jesus. I refuse to be walking dry. I refuse to be walking dry, oh Lord. Let there be a, an overflow in my spiritual life, in my physical life. Let there be an overflow. You want to tell him, Lord, come and fill me anew. I need you, oh Lord, I need you. I need you, oh Lord, I need you. And if you've not had a relationship with God, this is the time for you to repent repent. Without the repentance there is no refreshing from the Holy Spirit. Without a repentance there is no refreshing from the Holy Spirit. You will walk in dry and you will go out drier. Oh yes, that will not be your portion in the name of Jesus. I want you to pray, Lord come and touch me. I need a fresh fire from you. I need a fresh touch from you. I need a fresh fire from you. I need a fresh touch from you. Lord, I need a fresh touch from you in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus. Remember in the book of uh, Romans chapter 8 verse 26 there, it said we do not know how to pray but the Holy Spirit will pray through us. So if you know how to speak in tongues here, yeah, the trouble is that sometimes you think the problem is Mr. A whereas the problem is Mr. B. But when the Holy Spirit helps you to pray, it prays God's mind, prays the right prayer. I want you to start praying. I want you, you know, you know, just think about that situation and start speaking the language, the power language, the language that the enemy cannot, you know, understand. When you are praying in tongues, you, you are ministering unto God. You are not ministering unto men. You are ministering unto God. You are speaking the language of heaven. That 
situation, I want you to, to visualize it and start speaking the language of the, uh, of the uh, supernatural. We do not know how to pray, but the Holy Spirit helping us to pray. Oh yes, it searches out our heart. He prays with groaning that cannot be understood. Oppression will be far away from me. Oppression will be far away from you. Every stronghold of the enemy that has held you down, today you are set loose. You are set loose. You are set loose. He opens your eyes of understanding. There's divine illumination. You'll be filled with the fullness of Christ. I refuse to be a victim of the enemy. Joblessness is not my portion. Sickness is not my portion. Depression is not my portion. Regret is not my portion. Yakanda, push back the hands of the enemy concerning your life, concerning your family. Push back the hands of the enemy concerning your destiny. Malobo, yekete kete kete, robo bo bo bo, rika sunta ruba kusa, yakanda rebo santo. I refuse to be a victim. Oh yes, I refuse to be a victim. Nobody will be a victim in this house in the name of Jesus. Kasata, you are empowered for signs and wonders. You will manifest. I want you to pray. I will manifest. My glory will manifest. I will arise and shine. My glory will manifest. My children will manifest. My spouse will manifest. Kasata, defeat is not my portion. Mandara kasika, lekete robo koskilabo shata. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we give you all the glory. We thank you for your word that has come forth. As many of us that seem to be dry, as many of us that seem to be deficient, Father, let there be a fresh feeling, a fresh feeling, a fresh feeling. Makusa, your breath, the bread that took dry bones to become a formidable armor, an army, let it breathe upon us. Let it breathe upon us. We will experience an overflow in the name of Jesus. Sadness is out of our way. Depression is out of our way. Failure is out of our way. Oh yes, failure is out of our way. Confusion is out of our way in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. For in Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Father. Okay, let's just stand up. Let's just thank the Lord. Uh, he has been, he has done so much for us. We cannot tell it all. Just thank him, thank him, and prophesy into your week that Lord, even as I go out this week, by the power of the Holy Spirit, doors will be open. Great doors will be open. Those letters I'm expecting, start calling them forth. Holy Spirit is the greatest UPS. It will bring forth those parcels. Those pastors you are believing God for. I want you to pray, Lord, by your, by your divine unction. There will be divine connection, divine connection. Oh, yes, I want you to pray that you will not be where the grace of God will not be. We will not be where the, the enemy will take advantage of you in the name of Jesus. I want you to pray, Lord, come and order my step. Oh, Lord, come and order my step wherever I go in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you once more. What a glorious God you are. What a mighty God you are. Thank you for your power that is greater than any power. Lord, I pray that the encounter we've had today, nothing will take it away from us in the name of Jesus. Father, as we go out this week, let the lines fall for us in pleasant places. As we go out this week, oh Lord, let uncommon doors of blessings open for us in the name of Jesus. Let your oil of favor be released into our homes and our families in the name of Jesus. Let the heavens over us be open in the name of Jesus. Things of sorrow will not come our way in the name of Jesus. We will not die. We will not bury anyone in the name of Jesus. Father, by your almightiness, we speak peace to nations. 
We specially remember our country, Nigeria, that we go into election the ending of this week. That Father, Lord, you will take control in the name of Jesus. By your mercy, oh Lord, you will put the right person. We stand in the gap for our country, Nigeria, that Lord, only your counsel will stand in the name of Jesus. Father, I plead the blood of Jesus over each and every one of us. Surround us with the fire of the Holy Spirit that no weapon form or fashion against us shall prosper. Once more, we thank you, Father. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May he lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace, and give you peace, and give you peace, and give you peace, now and forevermore. For in Jesus' name we are prayed. Amen and amen. Shall we share the grace and fellowship?